In this chapter, we look at the goods market in an open economy. And again, the textbook that I use here is the one by Olivier Blanchard, Macroeconomics 8th edition. To start with, recall the demand in a closed economy, where we have uh, demand on the left-hand side is equal to consumption plus investment plus government consumption. That's what we had in a closed economy, when no, there are no exports and no imports. In an open economy, of course, we have to consider imports and exports. So we add to demand of the closed economy exports of the country, denoted by X, minus imports divided by the exchange rate. Because that's then imports measured in domestic goods, basically. By convention, imports are subtracted from demand because that's demand for goods produced domestically. The net exports uh, are the difference between exports and imports measured in uh, domestic goods. And um, that's determined by income at home and abroad, basically, and by the exchange rate. But in equilibrium, when the goods market is in equilibrium, we will see that the uh, trade balance does not need to be um, equal to zero. So there could be a trade surplus and there could be a trade deficit in an equilibrium. Generally, what is done and what is also reasonable to assume is that exports depend positively on income abroad. If foreign countries have higher incomes, they import more and that would also increase exports of, from the perspective of the home country. And it depends negatively on the exchange rate. So if uh, the exchange rate is higher, so if there is an appreciation of the domestic exchange rate, um, then this is a price increase of the goods that the domestic economy sells on the world market. And as such, it would reduce exports, ceteris paribus. Imports now depend positively on domestic income. So here we had foreign income with a star. Here we have domestic income. If households um, uh, have a higher income at home, then they would demand more goods uh, produced uh, abroad. So imports would rise with income. And imports would also rise with the exchange rate. If the domestic currency is strong on the world market, then goods produced in the rest of the world become cheaper, and that would lead to an increase in imports. We will later consider the effects of uh, demand shocks abroad and at home, and of the exchange rate on income and on the trade balance in an open economy. In an open economy, we have to consider the difference between the domestic demand for goods, that's consumption plus investment plus government consumption, and is on the next slides the DD curve, and the domestic demand for domestically produced curve, which is <clears throat> the domestic demand minus what is imported from abroad. And that's the AA curve on the next uh, slides. So we will now illustrate this graphically. We have here a diagram displaying demand on the vertical axis and production or income on the horizontal axis. And domestic demand, so the uh, DD curve, is given, as I said before, by consumption plus investment plus government consumption. Now the demand for domestically produced goods, the AA curve, is the DD curve minus imports divided by the exchange rate. And that's flatter than this curve here, because imports depend positively on income, as we've seen. So the difference between domestic demand and domestic demand for domestically produced goods widens as income increases. So the shaded area between the two curves, that's imports, basically. Now we use these insights and goods market clearing to derive net exports or the trade balance. For this, we draw again the DD curve and the AA curve, where the AA curve is flatter than the DD curve. And then we recall the ZZ curve. The ZZ curve in the open economy is given by this expression here, which includes exports minus imports divided by the exchange rate. So this means that it is equal to the AA curve, which is the demand for domestically produced goods, plus exports. And that's 
kind of assumed um, constant here because it does not depend on domestic income. It depends on foreign income. So if we shift um, the AA curve upwards by exports, we arrive at the ZZ curve. This is also illustrated here. We have the difference between the ZZ curve and the AA curve given by exports. And we now draw in the diagram below net exports on the vertical axis, production and income on the horizontal axis. At the point where the DD curve and the ZZ curve intersect, at that point, we have net exports being equal to zero, so trade is balanced. We don't have a trade surplus or a trade deficit. We can see this immediately when we consider the two curves. The ZZ curve is given here by consumption plus investment plus government consumption plus exports minus imports divided by the exchange rate. And the DD curve is just consumption plus investment plus governmental consumption. And the two can only be equal if the net exports are equal to zero and we don't have a trade surplus or a trade deficit. If we are, however, to the left of this intersection between the two curves, here the ZZ curve is above the DD curve. So we have that uh, net exports are positive. There is less demand um, for goods overall than there is um, overall demand for domestically produced goods. Net exports are positive and we have a trade surplus. By contrast, if we are to the right of this intersection, the DD curve is above the ZZ curve and we have uh, more demand for goods than there is worldwide demand for domestically produced goods and we would have a trade deficit. So here we have a trade surplus to the left of this intersection and here a trade deficit to the right of this intersection. Now we want to determine the goods market equilibrium. And for that we know we must have that the total production and income Y must be equal to the total demand for domestically produced goods from coming either from the domestic economy or from the world market. In equilibrium, we therefore have that y is equal to c plus i plus g plus nx. And nx can be positive, negative, or balanced. Everything is possible at equilibrium. This graph illustrates the goods market equilibrium in the open economy, where we have demand on the vertical axis again, production and income on the horizontal axis, and all equilibria need to be on the 45 degree line because there we have that production at home is equal to the total uh, demand for domestically produced goods. So if we draw the ZZ curve, then where the ZZ curve intersects with the 45 degree line, there is the equilibrium of the goods market. Now at that point, as it is drawn here, we have that at equilibrium, the economy imports more than it exports to satisfy demand, and therefore the economy has a trade deficit. So overall, to summarize, in an open economy we need to consider exports and imports, where the net exports depend basically on demand for domestically produced goods and domestic demand for foreign produced goods, which in turn it depends on uh, income levels at home and abroad and by the price, uh, relative price of domestic goods and foreign goods on the world market and that's determined by the exchange rate. At a goods market equilibrium, the home country may have a trade deficit or a surplus. We could have drawn this also differently where the country would have run a trade uh, surplus. Uh, but the point is, uh, it's not necessarily the case that at the goods market equilibrium, um, exports and imports are the same.